Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Mark, this is Spagapper Backpacking, and today we are back out, still doing that search, trying to find that ultimate coffee on the trail. And so today we're gonna be looking at one of probably the more commonly suggested methods, and that is cowboy coffee. So what is cowboy coffee? So cowboy coffee is essentially just brewing your cup of coffee, just throwing your grounds in with your pot. Uh, there are a lot of different techniques, a lot of different ways of doing it. I'm going to show you guys what I've come up with is what I think is the best, most effective way of doing it. Not saying if you do it a different way, it's wrong. Just saying this is the way I've found to be most effective using the beans and the grinds that I've experimented with. So why don't we get this thing going and check it out. All right, so cowboy coffee is a fairly simple method of brewing up a cup of coffee. You just need a pot, water, a stove, and some grounds. So I am using Coastal Coffee Roasters Papua New Guinea City Blend, or City um, Roast. It's a single origin out of Papua New Guinea. It is uh, a really good coffee. I like this one. I've ground it pretty fine. Now, the grind is something that you'll have to play with to figure out how you want yours done. If you go more of the French roast style, you end up having some pieces that still float after a pretty good amount of immersion. If you go a little bit finer, you can get the ground grinds to all settle to the bottom, which is really what you're looking for. You could go extremely fine and actually go to almost a an espresso or finer grind and go Turkish style and just have it all mixed in there and uh, and have like a sludge at the bottom at the end which a lot of people don't mind. Now I had to play around with it quite a bit to find the grind that worked best for me because I do not like floaters at all. I do not like sipping my coffee and having any grounds in my mouth. That is not something I enjoy whatsoever so I've come up with this. This is uh, a little bit coarser than espresso, but definitely finer than drip. Way finer than using a, uh, a French press style. So, let's get some water on, get that stuff coming to a boil, and we'll talk a little bit more about this as we get it going. So I've got the water on right now. I have a mug with me as well that I will end up pouring it into, but there are a lot of people out there that will brew and drink right out of the same vessel. Because I'm using this 550, you could use a 550, a 450, you could use something up, you know, even up to a 700 and still use it pretty much as a mug and just pick it up and sip right out of it. Um, as long as you're doing it right so that the ground settles to the bottom, you can do it that way. I like to take it that extra step and pour it into a, a separate mug. It allows it to cool down a little bit as you're pouring it out, but it also segregates out most of, if not all, of the grounds. And for me, a cleaner cup is produced that way, and I enjoy it just a little bit better, so that's what we're gonna do. Okay, it looks like we have a rolling boil going, so I'm gonna take this off of the heat right now, turn off canister stove, and just kinda move that out of the way. So now we've got hot boiling water right there. I'm gonna open up my bag of grounds. It's a little bit windy, so I'm gonna make sure I'm a little bit careful as I'm pouring these in. Eh, spilled a little bit, but not bad. I'm using 17 grams. I've got a timer set. I'm gonna start the timer. I've got the timer set for six minutes. And so what I'm gonna do is just stir these so that they are all immersed and in there, ready to go. Get what I can off of the sides. Put the top back on, cover on, and let that sit for two minutes. At two minutes, then I'm going to stir it again. Let everything settle. 
at six minutes, I'm gonna pour it into my mug. You can see what it looks like. It kind of bubbles up. You've got what's called the bloom. As the water interacts with that coffee, it releases the CO2 gases and you get the bloom. Everything kind of rises to the top, but then it will absorb the water that's in there and start sinking, falling to the bottom. If I had a clear mug, you'd be able to see that taking place. All right, we are two minutes in, so I'm going to stir it. Give it a good stir just to get everything kind of mixed up. Make sure those grounds are fully, fully wet and immersed in that water. Now I'm just gonna cover it, let it sit for the remainder of the time. Once we hit six minutes, then I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Okay, there's our six minutes up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to come across the top and just scoop off some of this foam that's there just to make sure there is no hidden grounds in there and just discard that off to the side. Now, as I'm looking at it, there is not, and you can kind of see that it's just foam that's on there. No big deal, and as you're looking at it, you don't really see anything there. So now what I'm gonna do is actually take it and transfer it to my mug, and I'm gonna pour it pretty slowly, just so that I'm not pulling up too much of the stuff from the bottom. Now what this does, by it being a full immersion the way that it is, you'll get a lot more of the solubles from the coffee that come through. And so it is a, a much more complex, um, robust, full cup of coffee. And you can see what's left in there is just all of the grounds and just a little bit, I leave just a little bit of the liquid in there, but that's pretty much all of the grounds right there. And here you have a much cleaner cup of coffee. All right, so I have made up my cup of cowboy coffee. And if I pull this out of here, you guys can see in the mug, it is a, it's a dark cup of coffee. Now this is a lighter roast. It's not a super dark roast. Um, I'd say it's more on the medium side than, than really light. Still really hot, but has a, a great flavor. It extracts it really well. There are a lot of different ways that people do cowboy coffee. And there are ways that people make sure that the grounds settle by pouring, you know, uh, cold water on top before they pour it. And that should drop the water, create the break that drops the, the grounds to the bottom and has a clean cup. There are other people that leave it on the fire while it's boiling, add their grounds and boil it for several minutes. To me, coffee is designed to be brewed or meant to be brewed between like 190 and 205 degrees. If you're boiling it, you're above that and you're kind of scorching the beans. I tried it. So I've tried all the different methods that I've seen people tell me about or I've watched on YouTube. What I found when I did the boiling method was I ended up with a more bitter cup of coffee. What I have right here is a very smooth cup of coffee. Cleanup is kind of a pain because now my, my pot that I cook or boil water in has a ton of grounds in it that I've got to clean out. Um, but for some people, it is well worth it to have a good cup of coffee. And you don't have to bring any extra tools, nothing special. You could just drink it straight out of here. A lot of people do. And because those grounds have settled to the bottom. Now, here's the deal. If you have good quality coffee beans, it all starts with good quality coffee beans. If you have good quality coffee beans with no fill in them, they should settle to the bottom as long as they're fresh and they're good quality. Now, if you have, who knows, some, some off-brand that's already been ground that you picked up off the, the shelf at the supermarket, they may have much more floaters in there because there may be fill items in there. They may not be good. They're more maybe more of the, the husky type stuff, the, the stuff that shouldn't have gotten in there to begin with. They hide a lot more of that when you have blends and you have uh, supermarket type cheaper coffee. When you go with something like this, which is a single origin, more expensive coffee, it should all settle to the bottom very well like this one did.
hey, definitely a viable option if you're looking for a lightweight way to do it. Yes, there's a little bit of cleanup, but the yielding result is a good cup of coffee out on the trail. Let's keep this series going. Come back next time when I'm testing out another way to make coffee out on the trail. I'll see you down the trail.